There is likely to be credit tightening. There's some stresses ahead, commercial real estate and the like, but this should be manageable. People are actually going to need to figure out how to be good investors going forward, and we have not yet mentally adjusted. Those were just a few industry leaders weighing on the state of the market and in the wake of wild few weeks that we've been tracking for the bank, banking sector at the Milken Institute Global Conference in California. Joining us now with his thoughts is Adil Zaman, who is the Wall Street Alliance Group partner here. Thanks so much for taking the time here with us this morning. Good to be with you. So let's dive right in. When we think about the Fed decision coming forth later today and how investors have been trying to perhaps not fight the Fed, but it seems like investors have been trying to at least and have been bucking the Fed a little bit in the communicated statements. What does today's decision mean for the outcome of a lot of investors that have been trying to anticipate what the Fed is doing thus far? So we see that there are two themes going on in the market right now, right? So the one theme is that the earnings reports are showing that economic demand seems to be holding up pretty well in light of Fed tightening. You know, we saw the big tech deliver where it mattered the most with cloud and with advertising. And some of the consumer companies, they're, they're showing that consumers are willing to pay the higher prices. But on the other hand, what we're seeing is that with the JOLTS report and then with the GDP report, things are slowing down. So we anticipate that most likely the Fed will do a 25 basis points rate hike, they'll stay put, and that inevitably is going to be constructive for the equity markets. How, how is that going to be constructive? Because it does imply, we've been talking a lot about the slowing that we could see, not just from that tightening, but from what's going on in the banking sector, slower loan growth, for example, so slower economic growth. So how does that feed through in being positive for equities? Well, I think that right now uh, what it is going to do is that this slow, slow down in loan growth is going to slow down the inflation, which will mean that the Fed is going to be out of the picture sooner rather than later. And it helps their medicine work. And I think at this point in time, we feel that it's a sector by sector, stock by stock market. And in our opinion, the environment that we are in right now, bigger is the new better. And we anticipate that this environment is going to be quite positive for big tech and big banks. And, and so for the big tech companies that we've heard from, this is still a period where they're trying to sell to the street a growth narrative where they're investing into that growth right now. So in the near term, perhaps some hit to margins. And over the long term, they would expect that this means that the business grows out, the valuations continue to multiply. But how long might investors have to wait for that period? So we think that right now, these big tech companies, they are going through a period of efficiency, right? As you mentioned, that they're laying off workers, their businesses are that they're overhired in the first place. Their businesses are a lot leaner. Mm -hmm. So that eventually, when the economy does pick up, and that could take a few years, they will be in a position to benefit from it due to higher net profit margins. And we see that while there's opportunity in big tech, we are also seeing vulnerability in small tech and we would meet because of the lack of access of credit. And we feel that inevitably that will lead to industry consolidation, which will favor, favor the bigger players. It's so interesting to me. In your notes, you said bigger is better, <laughs> not necessarily in terms of, of headcount, for example, but just in terms of the size of the companies, which is not necessarily something you hear very often, just said very simply in those terms. So sticking with tech, Apple, can't get bigger than that. So um, we're about to get those earnings um, after the close tomorrow. How, how do we feel about Apple in this environment? Apple certainly has not been as much a grower, right, in recent years. We feel uh, constructive about Apple's earnings. Apple's is a stock on our watch list that we really like. Uh, they've, you know, they're doing really well with the iPhones. The market share grew to over 50% of smartphones in the U.S. Uh, they are, we see growth in their service business, which is their crown jewel with, uh, with margins over 70%. And Apple, what Apple has done really well is entrench us into the ecosystem. So my wife, she just recently, her cell phone, iPhone was stolen. And the next day, without batting an eyelid, she went and bought a new one, right? So once you're in that ecosystem, it's really hard to get out of it. And that speaks volumes for the business model. And so, okay, so even within the, the top picks that you would have right now, outside of tech, where else could investors be looking? So we, we like big banks and, uh, you know, a stock on our watch list, another one that we like is J.P. Morgan Chase. You know, they went into this acquisition of First Republic from a position of strength. 
uh, you know, the earnings were really good. And now with this acquisition, they have access to this whole a new sect of clients that are high net worth mm -hmm. that they could monetize in different ways, right? And Jamie Dimon had the foresight not to load up too heavily on bonds when interest rates were super low. In fact, in a banking conference in 2020, he spoke about the low yielding treasuries at that time that he wouldn't touch them with a 10 foot pole, mm. right? And we feel that those are the type of strategic decisions that have enabled the bank to be in a position right now to be able to take advantage of these type of opportunities when they come. I mean, there's a, there has been a lot of hand-wringing about J.P. Morgan's size, right? Not so much from an investor perspective as from a regulatory perspective. From an investor perspective, are there any disadvantages to, I mean, the enormity of a J.P. Morgan? Is it, for example, maybe not as nimble as some of its smaller competitors? Is there anything you worry about? So... What, what we feel is that the U.S. is overbanked right now when we compare us to the rest of the world, right? We lead in terms of the number of financial institutions. We have over 4,000, where uh, U.K. Is, the, is a close second with just over 300. Hmm. So we feel that this cleansing is inevitable, where the smaller banks are going to, in our opinion, go out of business, get taken over by the larger players. And because they, uh, banks like JP Morgan had to meet far more stringent stress test requirements, so they will be able to benefit from this deposit flow. So in the long term, we feel that this is actually favorable and this cleansing process will be good for the industry as a whole. Yeah. Adele, thank you so much for being here. Adele Zaman is Wall Street Alliance Group Partner. Interesting on these uh, various picks. And we're gonna, again, we're going to hear from Apple after the close tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.